Hey guys, what's up? It's Amina. So as you can see today, I'm going to be making the ultimate Ethiopian breakfast combo. Chachapsa, kimchi, unkula, and furfur. So delicious. And actually, fun fact, when me and Elias first met, he took me to a restaurant that had a breakfast combo that was these four things and I loved it so much. It's one of my favorite things to order. So I was like, you know what? Let me make it at home. So today we're having the ultimate Ethiopian breakfast. Let me show you guys how I made this. So first things first, I'm starting with all of the things I need to chop. I'm starting with half of an onion. Half of this will be for the eggs, half for the firfir. Chop that up. And then I'm going to chop up just about one third of green pepper and then one tomato. And the tomato will also be split between the eggs and the firfir. Now I'm just getting my garlic crusher and I'm gonna take a few pieces of garlic. Mine are kind of small. And I'm just gonna crush some fresh garlic. Now everything is all chopped up. I'm gonna start off actually by making kimchi. That is the easiest thing to make. I love it so much. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take one cup of kimchi and then you're going to wash it with some water. So I'm showing this because if I don't show it on the video, people are always like, you didn't wash your, your kimchi, you didn't wash it. And then after I washed it, I put it inside of my instant pot. So this is one cup of kimchi and then I'm going to add exactly one and a half cups of water. Also, I'm gonna be adding some crushed pink Himalayan sea salt to this. And then literally that's it. You just cover it up. You can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm putting pressure cooker on low and I'm putting it on 12 minutes and I hit the start button. That's it. The Instant Pot will literally cook this kimchi perfectly. So yeah, now that it's finished, I did the quick steam release. And then after that, you can open it up and see what we got. Look at that perfectly cooked kimchi. Mix it up just a little bit. At this point, I like to add Ethiopian kibbe, which is just spiced butter. And I add a couple of spoons in there, probably about one tablespoon and a half, maybe depending on your, your flavoring. And that's it. I transferred it into this bowl and it is so, so delicious and so easy to make. All right, moving on to the next dish. We're gonna be making firfir. So I'm using half of those onions that I cut up and I'm just gonna start to heat those up on the stove. At this point, I still haven't added anything to the onions. I'm just kind of like drying them out a bit. Now I'm adding some pure avocado oil from Primal Kitchen. You guys know I like this brand. Just like a couple of tablespoons, not too much. And then I'm just gonna stir that around and let the onions continue to cook, get a little bit softened. And now I'm adding berbere, which is Ethiopian red spice. So I added about three heaping tablespoons of berbere, but I kind of go by the color and how it looks. That's the best way. So you want it to be kind of like a nice reddish color, not too dark though. And there I added a little bit of water and then I'm just going to let that cook, let the onions cook nicely. And, and I just cover that up and let that continue to cook. After it's been cooking for some minutes, I went ahead and I added half of the tomatoes that I cut up earlier to this mixture. And then I also added most of the garlic and I'm just going to mix that together. And I'm gonna let this cook for an additional five or so minutes. And I almost forgot, but Elias reminded me I need to add kibbe, which is Ethiopian spiced butter. So I went ahead and did that now. And I let that cook for an additional like five or so minutes. And I also added my pink Himalayan sea salt. There we go. Now I'm gonna prepare the injera. I have here 100% teff injera. That's my preference because I don't eat gluten anymore. So I'm just gonna take one piece of injera and I'm gonna roll it up like this and then I'm going to cut it into small pieces, maybe like one to one and a half inches. And now I switched the heat all the way to low and I'm adding my injera, placing them on the pan very carefully. So the trick that I found to not make this turn super mushy is just to not overly stir them or overly touch it. So yeah, 
I'm just pushing this injera inside so that it can absorb the sauce, but I'm not really stirring it because you can turn this mushy. And me, I don't like mushy texture. So there you go. That it looks perfect right there. And yeah, if you're wondering, that was Elias's hand. That wasn't mine, but. <laughs> All right, next we are going to be making uncolal, aka eggs. I'm starting off with some onions and some green pepper and just heating that up on the stove. I'm adding some berberi, Ethiopian red spice. I just use one tablespoon. We're not trying to make this super spicy, it's just to give it some nice flavor. Then I added some avocado oil and I mix that together with a wooden spoon and I just let that cook until the onions and green pepper soften. Next, I added the tomato and I added a little bit of that fresh garlic that I cut up earlier. And I'm also adding pink Himalayan sea salt. Now, as that cooks, I'm gonna prepare my eggs. So I added five eggs in here. Now I put my eggs inside of this delicious mixture. And now I'm adding my pink Himalayan sea salt to taste and stirring this. I have my heat all the way on low right now because this will burn pretty easily. So you kind of got to let it cook very, very slowly and low. And it looks so weird in the beginning, like so soupy and stuff, but it definitely comes together. And the taste is so amazing. If you guys are like bored of regular eggs, then you should definitely try this. I'm using this tool that I got from Amazon. It just grounds up like any beef or eggs really, really finely. So I like it. So yeah, that's how my eggs turned out. Last but certainly not least, I'm making some chachepsa. I'm starting off with some organic flour. I'm going to be adding some pink Himalayan sea salt to this flour. I think it's just one half cup of flour. A little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt goes in there. And then I'm also adding some avocado oil, of course, from the same brand, Primal Kitchen. And that was probably like half of a tablespoon, if that. Next, I'm gonna be adding some room temperature water. This is important so that you don't get any lumps in your flour mixture. It has to be room temperature. Now I busted out my cast iron skillet. I love to use this when I'm making chachapsa. It just works really well for me. I put some oil on there. Then I just poured my chachapsa right on there. You can see it was perfect to make one piece of chachapsa, which is exactly what I was going for. And then I'm just gonna let that cook. I have my stove kind of like on a medium and you'll see it turn translucent and then darker and darker. <laughs> As it's cooking, I'm gonna prepare the sauce that goes over the chachapsa. So I use some Ethiopian kibbe, which is the spiced butter and I just use like maybe a tablespoon. I went ahead and melted that up and then I'm going to add some berbere, which is Ethiopian red spice. So I added just about a tablespoon of red spice and then I mix those together. You want the consistency to be liquidy still, but it's like red to color. All right, now I'm flipping over my chachapsa bread. You can see that it is nicely cooking on my cast iron skillet there. It looks perfect. That's kind of where I like to stop it. So now I turned off my heat and I'm gonna let that cool down a little bit and now me and Elias are double teaming here and we're tearing the chachapsa apart into bite-sized pieces and then we're going to add this delicious sauce right on top of it and mix it together and pretty much that is how you make chachapsa super super simple so yeah, now the most exciting part, I'm gonna plate up all of my dishes, starting with my eggs, AKA unkulal. The kimchi goes in there, which is bulgur. Next we have the firfir, which is, I don't know in English, and then chachapsa. <laughs> Look at that. And then I'm just going to add a few pieces of injera on the top. Now we get to eat. Mm -hmm. Bring those eggs right next to me. All right. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. It's all good. So good. How's the chip chip, Good. 
Let me taste a bit of it. I'm breaking my rules today and eating carbs. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So good. Kinky. I'm gonna get a spoon time. Yeah. I'm gonna get with this one too. We you get that? We don't get with a spoon. Mm. Use our hand. Very, very good. So delicious. Mm -hmm. For it. Mm. Mm. It was better than the restaurant. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The food from restaurant is so spicy. It is not good. I don't think they cook it. Like, I don't know. Very spicy. Yeah. And it's not even good. This is tough in Jura, right? It's stiff. Okay. I got scared for a second. 100% good. Very good. Look at it. I thought you were gonna give me a good shot. <laughs> you looked like it, you were like. <laughs> good shot. There we go. <laughs> Don't drop it. Alright guys, that was it for this video. Hopefully you guys give this recipe, well, give all of these recipes a try out. And also if you have any tips on what I can do to make it easier or better, just write it in the comments down below. Actually, a lot of you guys helped me out last time in my videos. How did you like it, Elias? Mm, good. That's one of my favorite Ethiopian combos, breakfast combos to have. I don't, what, what other breakfast foods do you guys even have? I feel like that's all of them. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, the That's it guys, the mushi needs to take a nap now. So, <laughs> so I'm not a baby. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed this video and we will see you in our next video. Bye! Peace! Peace! In the middle east. It rhymes. It rhymes. <laughs> it just rhymes.